addition, commutative, multiplication, commutative, exponentiation, not commutative. Has that ever bugged you? Why is it that exponentiation lacks the properties that its predecessors have? And what if I told you that there's another operation out there lurking in the shadows that truly embodies everything that we think exponentiation should be? Guys, welcome back to the channel. Recently, I was browsing YouTube and I came across this video from Blackpin Redpin, which presents allegedly a property of logarithms. But what if we reframe this property, view it in a different context? Say we pick a base and define the binary operation a to the natural log of b. Then this property tells us that the operation is commutative. Now, every good operation needs a name, so we'll call this the power log, which kind of sounds like a wrestling move, but that is just Fine, so could this be the operation that we're looking for? That's what we're gonna find out. Commutativity is great, but if this is truly to be the next tier up from multiplication, there's a lot more it needs to do. For example, multiplication distributes over addition, so we should make sure that the power log distributes over multiplication. Let's see. A power log B times C is A to the natural log of B times C, and applying a property of logarithms gives us A to the natural log of B plus the natural log of C. And that is of course, A to the natural log of B times A to the natural log of C, which is A power log B times A power log C. So indeed, power log does distribute over multiplication and that is just fantastic. Next on the agenda, Associativity. Guys, associativity is very important. We want our operation to be associative, so let's verify that the power log is associative. A power log B power log C is A to the natural log of B to the natural log of C. And using a property of logarithms, we can write this as A to the natural log of B times the natural log of C which is of course a to the natural log of b, all to the power of the natural log of c, and that is a power log b, power log c. So indeed, power log is an associative operation. So at this point, we have a commutative, associative binary operation that distributes over multiplication. Things are looking very nice at this point. Next question we can ask. Identity, is there an identity? Well, let's see, if we take x power log a and we set this equal to a, what does that say about x? Well, this means that x to the natural log of a is a. Well, that just means that x is e. So the identity of power log is e, or presumably whatever base you choose when defining the operation. Since there's an identity, we can ask about Inverses, are there inverse elements? Let's see, say we take a power log b and we set that equal to the identity, which is e. What can we say about b? Well, this means that a to the natural log of b equals e. If I take the log base a on both sides, I can write natural log of b equals natural log of e over natural log of a. And so b equals e to the one over natural log of a. So the inverse element of a with respect to the power log is e to the one over the natural log of a. Now, this all looks very nice. I mean, this operation has all the features we could possibly ask for, but that alone doesn't make it the next tier up from multiplication, does it? But what does? What would verify that power log is to multiplication as multiplication is to addition? Well. What if? What if the field of real numbers with addition and multiplication is isomorphic to some other field of real numbers with multiplication and the power log? An equivalent algebraic structure with multiplication playing the role of addition and the power log playing the role of multiplication. Does such a field exist?
Now, guys, I'm gonna remain agnostic regarding the underlying set for this ring, opting to find a ring isomorphism first. Now, my go-to strategy when looking for a ring isomorphism is first, I follow my heart. Second, I look for a function that preserves both identities. So in this case, we're looking for a function f that takes zero to one and one to e. So what's a good candidate for a function that does that? It's e to the x. So e to the x is gonna be our candidate for a ring isomorphism. Now the image of e to the x from the real numbers is the positive real numbers. So that's the underlying set of the ring. We know e to the x is injective and we know it preserves both identities because that's why we picked it in the first place. So all we need to do is show that it preserves both operations. Let's show that addition is preserved by e to the x. F of a plus b is e to the a plus b, which is e to the a times e to the b, which is f of a times f of b. So addition is preserved by e to the x. Remember, multiplication is the addition of this new ring. So addition is preserved. Next up, multiplication. Does e to the x preserve multiplication? Let's find out. F of a times b is e to the a times b which is e to the a to the b, which is f of a to the b. Now remember, f of b is e to the b, so we could write this as f of a to the natural log of f of b, which is f of a power log f of b. So multiplication is also preserved, making e to the x a ring isomorphism. That means that the field of real numbers with addition and multiplication is isomorphic to the field of positive real numbers with multiplication and power log. This means that the algebraic relationship between addition and multiplication is perfectly preserved when we go to multiplication and power log. This suggests that power log really is the next tier up from multiplication in a deep algebraic sense, which makes exponentiation a false profit. Now guys, I do think something interesting is going on here. And if your interest has been piqued, there will be exercises at the end of the video. I suggest you check them out. They may serve to guide your curiosity in a certain direction. And as always, I'm very eager to see your own insights on these concepts in the comments down below. This video was brought to you by the Mathematically Alpha Specimens on Patreon. Transmitting my work from the abstract void is no small feat, so if you want to see more videos like this one, consider supporting me on Patreon to help make that happen. Every contribution is greatly appreciated. That's going to do it for this video, guys. I'll see you in the next one.